Hi, I am VTuber. Welcome to Introduction to PixAI. This video is going to be aimed for someone who's a beginner. So if you've never heard of PixAI, if you're just starting out, this video is for you. Um, if you already generate locally or are familiar with PixAI, you might know a lot of what's in this video. We are going to cover how do I navigate PixAI? How do I generate images? what makes PixAI unique, and how do I earn credits in PixAI? All right, here we are at PixAI.art. PixAI is a social media and AI art website where you can both post and generate your own images. I love PixAI because you don't need to have a good computer and you don't need to do anything to set it up. You can just generate your AI images directly in the browser. They also have an app for Android and iOS. So on the homepage, we can view other people's art. We can also search by specific categories, or we can hop right in and generate from the homepage. Personally, I prefer to go to the upper right hand corner to new artwork. When we click on new artwork, it'll open up this information panel. Since we want to create an image, let's hit generate image. If you have never made an AI image before, this setup can look a little intimidating, but don't worry, we're going to break everything down step by step. In our image generation section, I will be talking about models and what they are. We will go over how to craft a good prompt and how to utilize the negative prompt. We are also going to be talking about sampling methods and we will cover steps, scale, seed, image to image, and how to use control net. Before we even tell it what type of prompt we want, let's decide on what model we're going to use. I'm so sorry I'm blocking the models, but they're right here on the right hand side. The models are constantly being updated, which I think is really great and makes using this website so exciting because there's constantly new content and features being added. Any model that has the word real in it is going to be really good at creating photorealistic images. However, if it has anything else and doesn't mention real, it's going to be much better at creating anime images. The Cetus Mix V2 and Abyss Orange Mix V2 are going to be good at making anime style images that have a slight 3D look and have an attention to detail and shading. The Counterfeit PixAI Mix is also going to be good at making anime 2D images, but it has a little bit more of a painterly feel to it. The two anything models, V3 and 4.5, are going to give you your traditional anime images. And finally, the pastel model is going to give you a very artsy pastel feel. It's the most abstract looking of all these models. You might notice that a lot of these models have PixAI in them. These are PixAI's proprietary custom mixes. So you can't find these models anywhere else. You can only get them here. Let's just get started with anything V3 just make a classic anime looking image. Here is where we adjust the sampling steps. For almost all sampling methods, you never need to go above 30. One way to think about all of these sampling methods would be that they are all equations or algorithms that are trying to get to the same outcome. That outcome is your prompt. It is what you want your image to be. On PixAI, we can categorize the sampling methods into three categories. The first category would be the ancestral methods. These have A in their name. They will change your image a little bit step by step. So if all else is the same, but say you have one image generated at 29 steps, one image generated at 30 steps, they're going to look a little different. The other group would be the non karas These are all convergent, meaning no matter which one you choose, 
after about 30 steps, all the images will look nearly identical. The third group is the Karas group. These are also convergent with each other. As a general rule of thumb, they tend to look slightly sharper than group two. However, they are going to cost more. Also keep in mind about how the SDE one is a little bit different than the rest. For our example today, I'm going to go with Euler, keeping it simple. As mentioned, the number of sampling steps is best at 30. Next is our CFG scale. The CFG scale, or Classification Free Guidance Scale, is how closely the AI is going to try to stick to your prompt, assuming it understands your prompt. The lower you go, the more freedom it has to fill in details that you didn't specify. However, the higher you go, you risk your image looking glitched or getting artifacts, which give it that deep fried meme look. I personally do not recommend going above a 14 or 15. However, if you go too low on your scale, you're going to get an image that's kind of like visual gibberish. It's not going to make sense and it's not going to be what you asked for. I generally like to make my images between 4.5 and 11. For this example, let's change our scale to six. Below the CFG scale is the seed. By default, it's going to be random and you honestly don't really need to touch the seed unless you are trying to recreate the same image as before. One reason you would want to enter the seed would be if your image was really close to how you wanted it, but you wanted to make a small change. In that case, you'd put your seed from the image that you liked and you would copy the prompt and settings, but just make a small change, such as fixing a negative prompt. Now that we have our settings, let's figure out what we want our image to look like. For now, I'm going to keep the size as a square. You can also choose portrait or landscape, but keep in mind these will be more expensive. To generate an image, we will need to enter a prompt. A prompt is what you want to see in your image, but keep in mind it does not understand natural language very well. So instead, we need to use something called Buru tags. Buru tags are kind of like when you hashtag an image. So it's short, usually one to two word phrases. I highly recommend checking out the site Don Buru. You can also replace the D-A-N with safe to get a website that is safe for work because there are some questionable images here. However, it's going to be very helpful for understanding what phrases the prompt should be made of. This is really useful because it will tell you what words the AI understands. For example, I've brought up here the tag group of hairstyles. So let's say we wanted to generate an image of someone with pigtails. Well, the AI doesn't actually really understand what pigtails are. Instead, we can see that it understands twin tails. So that's something to keep in mind. If the AI is not understanding something you've told it, come here onto Don Buru or Safe Buru and check what the tag is. As a general rule of thumb, if a tag has more than 3,000 examples, it is probably going to be understood by the AI. Let me show you how you can see how many tags something has. From this page, we can click on a tag and see how many times it has been used. Let's check out Twin Tails. I can see that we have over 600,000 instances of Twin Tails being used. So the AI should understand what we're asking for when we use this. Let's get back to PixAI and actually make an image. One thing I should mention before we start writing our prompt is that sometimes people use quality tags. You will see quality tags are on that website I just mentioned, Don Buru or Safe Buru. However, they will often describe a non-specific characteristic, such as high res or 4K. Unfortunately, these do not do anything 
to your image. When the AI was trained, these types of phrases were not trained into the AI. So adding something like 4K is just going to add noise that the AI doesn't quite understand to your image. One mistake I sometimes see people make on PixAI is using curly brackets. Curly brackets do not do anything. There is another site called Novel AI, which is a paid AI subscription service. That site uses curly brackets. But remember, PixAI does not. Let's get started making a prompt. One thing I like to do is put the tag scenery in my prompt. Usually, this will give your background a really beautiful and detailed look. Okay, let's generate our first prompt together. Right now, I'm going to leave high priority checked. High priority cost 1,000 credits. High priority means that your image will be generated as soon as possible. If you leave that unchecked, you will have to wait in line. The last I heard, there were about two to 3,000 people using PixAI, so that's a pretty long line, and sometimes wait time can be multiple hours. Okay, uh, now that we have all of our settings and we have our prompt, let's say, let's go. We got our first image, and it's not exactly what we were looking for. It looks like she has more black hair than blue hair. So let's talk about how to fix this. First, because I want to work with this same image, I'm going to find the seed. At this point in time, I don't think there's an easy way to grab the seed from this layout. So we're just gonna open a new tab and we're going to go to Generation Tasks and we're going to click on this image. We're going to say Show Detail Parameters and copy our seed. Now we can paste our seed into the seed box. The first way to troubleshoot this would be to use the negative prompt. Negative prompts are what you do not want. In this case, we don't want her to have black hair. So let's add black hair. Another thing that I don't like about this image too much is she has a lot of necklaces. I just said one necklace, so let's de-emphasize necklace. There are two ways to do this. We can either add square brackets or we can write a ratio. Each set of square brackets is going to decrease the weight of the prompt by 10%. Each parentheses that we add will increase the weight by 10%. You can think of your prompt like a pie. If you're adding weight to one slice, your other slices are compromised. This is why you should be careful and not add emphasis on everything. I'm going to use a ratio. So we're going to say necklace is a little less important than everything else. Now that we've updated the prompt and the negative prompt, let's try this again. All right, much better. This is what we're looking for. A girl with blue hair, she has green eyes, she's smiling. Just one necklace this time. Awesome. Another way to generate an image is by starting from a base image. The AI generates an image by starting off with noise and then refining it until it resembles something like your prompt. But what if we don't want it to start with noise? Well, we can upload our own image as a starting point for the AI. To do that, let's upload an image. Okay, I've uploaded a starting image. Let's change our prompt and our settings. Please note that the larger your image is, the more expensive it's going to be. We're going to try out a different model. I changed the sampling method and I erased the seed because we're no longer going to be working with that previous picture. We're doing something completely different. The strength is how much deviation the AI can go from the initial image. If we go all the way down to zero, you're going to have the exact same image you put in. But if you go all the way to one, you're gonna have an entirely different image. I recommend somewhere between 0.5 and 0.7, depending on how different you want your image to look. I'm gonna try and make Asuka. So even though we have the starting image, we still have to describe what we want. I am going to try to keep this image as Asuka, but this image was made with a different model. 
so I want to see how it would look with Abyss Orange Mix. So I'm going to describe Asuka using Buru tags. It's really helpful if you're using a character to also put the game or show that they're from. Alright, I'm going to keep my prompt's pretty simple for this, and I think we are ready to go. Okay, here's our final image. You can see that because my strength was set to 0.5, we didn't get a huge difference in our final image. We can also go to paint to add things to the image as its starting noise. For example, let's try and make her whole plug suit red. Alright, I just scribbled all over the black parts of the image, so now I'm going to say done. I don't want the scribbles to be part of our image, so I'm going to dial this up. Okay, let's see how this worked. And there we go. We changed her plug suit to be entirely red. Next, we are going to talk about control net. For control net, we will be covering all of the models that PixAI offers. So we'll be going over Candy Edge, Depth, HED Boundary, the MLSD, Open Pose, Segmentation, Normal Map, and Scribbles. I was so excited when PixAI added ControlNet to the UI because it is an extremely powerful tool. ControlNet is a second model on top of the image generation model that will help you get your image exactly how you want it. To use ControlNet, we will add image control. This opens up our ControlNet panel. From here, we can select a method. Let's start with Canny Edge. Canny is good for preserving fine details and outlines because it will identify and map sharp lines and edges. What it does is it takes our starting image in this case, this girl drinking a latte, and it identifies where the edges are. It will use those edges as a guide for where the color should go in the image. So I'll hit confirm. We still have to describe the image and give it a prompt, but we can completely change what that initial image looks like. Similar for the image to image, we can adjust the weight. I like to leave the weight at one. Let's try out a different model, just for fun. Okay, let's see how this works. Awesome, so one thing you might have noticed is that I forgot to adjust the size. When using image to image, PixAI automatically adjusts to that size, but I made a mistake, I forgot when using ControlNet, we have to choose a size. So let's try that again. Great, we can see that Canny Edge worked wonderfully. And we can see that we totally manipulated the color scheme from the initial image. So unlike image to image, which uses the initial colors, Canny Edge just uses the shapes. Next, let's talk about depth. Depth is really good for figuring out the positions of things. It will identify what is near in the picture and what is far away. It is pretty bad at preserving details though. So this is mostly useful for the organization of your image, not details like Canny was. So I'm going to upload the image and it's going to give me the step map. In this image, we see that this girl, Rize, is in the foreground of the image and the background is less important. We can see that's exactly what the depth map saw too. Let's try out Abyss Orange Mix E2. So you can notice that I didn't actually add anything about if she was standing or how to frame this picture, such as using cowboy shot or upper body, but because it was using the depth map, it knew how to position our person. Next on our list is the HED boundary. HED boundary is very good at keeping details and outlines. It's similar to Canny, but HED will map the softer and smoother outlines, so it's better at eliminating noise compared to Canny. This can make it much better 
at keeping details if that's important to your image. We can notice that these lines are much softer and smoother compared to the canny. A quick note here before I keep writing the rest of the prompt, I included backslashes because the Boo tag for Fate series has series in parentheses, but I don't want the parentheses to mean emphasis. I just want it to mean what the Boo tag says. So I include the backslashes to tell the AI to not emphasize the word series. Awesome, it looks like HED Boundary did its job. We can see that the details on the dress and the hair ties and crown were preserved just like the original image, but we got to change the image based off of our prompt. The next control net model we are going to use is MLSD. This is particularly good at identifying straight lines and edges. So this is most useful for images of architecture or buildings, but it's not very useful if there's anything with soft, smooth curves, such as people. When we look at this map, we can see these straight lines. We don't really see any curvy or bendy lines. I'm going to keep trying out different models. For this one, I'm going to add a brief description and we're gonna go. I forgot to readjust to landscape mode, but we can see that it preserved that same look as in the initial image. Perhaps Open Pose is one of my favorite control net models. It is great at adding one or more characters to your image. It does not keep any of the original image's details besides the pose, so you have a lot of freedom for what you can do. I also love this because it is great at translating a pose from a real life or 3D image into an anime image. The control net map for this one is going to look like a little skeleton. Each point of this corresponds with a specific body part. Note that you do not need a full body image for open pose to work. This can work with only the upper body or even just the face and you can control what angle the face is at. This time I'm going to remember to change it to landscape mode. So here we have the girl sitting positioned in a pretty similar way to our initial image. Let's keep exploring the other control net options. Next is segmentation. Segmentation is good for organizing the general composition of the image. The smaller details are going to get lost and the depth will not be preserved, but the shapes and general areas are going to remain pretty consistent. Let's try it out. Here we can see that the composition of our image stayed the same. The sky and the water separate at the same point and we have our boat in the same position. Our next control net is normal map. Normal map is good for both details and outlines. It also does a pretty decent job of maintaining the positioning of things, especially understanding what's further away and what's closer. <laughs> okay, it looks like normal map is having some issues right now. So unfortunately, I can't show you a great example in PixAI. However, if we go into the control net interface, we can see what was supposed to happen by hitting this eye for information. As you can see in this example image, they have a stuffed animal toy generated the normal map and then changed it from a lamb to maybe a dog. So in theory, we can do that with anime characters. The PixAI team works very hard, so I'm sure they are working on making sure bugs like this don't happen all the time. The final control net is Scribble. Scribble is used when you have a simple black and white line drawing or sketch. Keep in mind, if you have a sketch that is in multiple colors, when the map is generated, it's going to convert any non-white color into black. And there we go. We just turned that line drawing 
into this colorful person. So now we have covered all the different ways there are to generate images in the generation UI. However, there is one last way to make images, and that is by going to image threads. Whoa, whoa, this is VTuber from the future. I wanted to let you know that the image threads have gone away, but I'm going to leave this in here just in case they come back. Up here is thread. I really enjoy the image thread feature because it is a fun way to interact with other people's art. For example, here is our starting image. It is called the topic image. So we can add to the original prompt. Once you are done adding your prompts, you can hit generate a reply. This is a really fun way to interact with other people's art. My image has now been posted on this person's thread. It's a really fun way to interact with the community and see what other people are doing with the same base image. Sometimes people come up with ideas that I would have never thought of. Okay, well we made some really fun images, but what if we want to share our own images? In that case, click on your profile picture and go to Generation Tasks. Here, we can see all the images that we just created. I like how this Asuka turned out, so I'm going to click on it and say Publish. When you publish a art, you can give it a title, write a little description, and put tags so other people can find it. If you don't want other people copying your image prompts, you can say Hide Prompt. Also, you can mark your image as private. This will keep it in the Publish tab, but only you can see it. Please make sure to mark your images if they are not safe for work. Once you are done adding a title, description, tags, etc., we can now publish the image by hitting Publish. So now we can have a link if we want to share our image with other people. We can see how many views it got, how many likes, and if anybody's commented on it. By clicking Show Detail Parameters, we can see all of the details that were used in making this image. To see your published works, go to your Artworks tab. I can see that our Asuka image just got auto-filtered. So it was marked as not safe for work because the filter is a little strict. So we'll just let that be. You don't have to make your image right in PixAI. If you make it somewhere else locally, you can upload it here. To upload an image, go to New Artwork and say upload image. We definitely went through a lot of credits today. You can get credits every day by going to the credits tab and claiming your 10,000 daily points. For now, there is no other consistent way to get credits. Sometimes PixAI will have contests. These are extremely fun and there's usually a theme that you have to follow. If you win the contest, you can get credits. Another really fun way to both interact with the community and potentially earn more credits is by joining the PixAI Discord. You can find the Discord by this button here. In the Discord, the PixAI creators will sometimes announce new ways to earn credits. For example, there's a current promotion going on where if you have the word PixAI in your image title, and you post it somewhere such as Instagram, Twitter, or Reddit, and it gets more than 100 upvotes or likes, you can earn 10,000 free credits. Joining Discord is a great way to interact with the community and continue to learn more. I have definitely learned a lot by talking to other people who use PixAI, and I hope that I've helped other people as well. One last thing, there are a few more features we can do once we have our image ready. Select what image you want to work with on the left hand side. We can either use this as a base image when we do image to image. We can enhance it, which means to upscale it. So right now this image is 512 by 512. So let's make that larger. So now we're going to make this 816 by 816. All right, so we have upscaled the image. Note that this is not exactly identical. However, it is using the same prompt that we just used. So we can see that this one is larger than our first image. In addition to upscaling, we can also make variations. This will make 
three additional images based off of our initial image. As we can see, it's using the same prompt. We still have our girl with blue hair, green eyes, and wearing a necklace, but she looks slightly different in each one. This is a fun method to use if you like your image, but want to see what else you could have. Okay, well, thank you so much for listening to me blab on about this website. Uh, the creators are always working on new features and cool new additions to the site. So I'm afraid that by the time this is published, there's going to be some new features I haven't had the chance to talk about, but hopefully you get to join this website, check it out, maybe go on the Discord or the subreddit or interact with the Twitter because it is a really fun community. I hope to see some of your creations soon. Thank you so much. Bye.